Yes, thanks for popping into One Eyes Photos and it's really appreciated your support that you've given me. And if anyone's new to the channel and they're into cycling, remember to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any more cycling content. Well, today we're going to have a little bit of a chin wag about the new latest specialised offering. And if you've got even a little bit of cycling blood running through your veins, you would have heard about this bike called the Ephos. It's a super, super duper light 6.2 kilo disc brake bike. And let's just have a little bit of a chin wag, a little bit of a discussion about what does this bike offer and is it really worth the 17,000 Australian dollars that they're asking for it? Well, I just got off my PC watching a video by RacePoint of a build of the Specialized Ethos, and it was a beautifully produced video. And at, once they built the bike, they put it up on the scales and it came in at about 6.2 kilos. Now, they didn't actually show the bike hanging on the, hanging on the scales. They just showed you the scales close up. So we can't really know 100% if that was actually bike hanging off it. But for the benefit of the doubt, let's just believe that the video, even though it was probably heavily sponsored by Specialized, it is 6.2 kilos. So we've got a 6.2 kilos bike that's with our bottle cages and with our pedals. Now, with pedals, you know, you might want to put on some power meter pedals or whatever. So you're going to be looking probably about another 300, 300 grams and, you know, maybe a couple of bottle cages, so another couple of 200 grams. So we're going to get the bike up to a rideable bike up to around about, no, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9 kilos. So you can, jump, you know, swing your leg over it, jump on it and go for a ride. So that, that's still a pretty lightweight bike, but is it really such a lightweight bike? I mean, I mean I've got my, my look here right behind me, 695, and I had that built up, and I wasn't even trying to build a lightweight bike, and it hasn't even got the top campy group set. It's just got record on it. It's got a, a big dish plate cassette on the back. It's got a, a Damo seat, which are renowned for being heavy. It's got the Super Kraz you know, handlebar tape, which is nice and thick. So nothing went on this bike that was specifically to build it lightweight. And I had the Reynolds 66 millimeter deep tubulars. So they're not like a super lightweight wheel either. And that, that came in at 7.2 kilos, all built up with pedals on it and also cages. So we've saved ourselves with this EFOS. We saved us maybe, maybe four kilos. Uh, sorry, 0.4 of a kilo. I've saved yourself about 400 grams on this bike. So, and you probably could get that lighter if you wanted to put, you know, have some tubulars built up with discs. But I think they would have to be a custom build. I don't think you can buy tubular discs off the off the shop floors. I've never seen them. But anyway, that is an option. You could get a little bit more weight out of it. Well, the real concern is the durability of such a bike that's built so light. Now, it's not so much like a rim brake bike because to get the weight down to a rim brake bike they need to really chomp some weight out of the hubs and out of the frames and every little bit here and there. And they've also got an electric group set on, which, which everyone knows are not as light as a mechanical group set. So they're really chasing their tail to get the weight down. Now, what you've got to remember with a, a disc brake bike, you've got a steel rotor. And what a lot of people don't realize as well is, is when you have a disc brake bike, the forces are also transferred through the hub when you're braking. So you can't make like an ultra thin hub because the forces of your braking need to be transferred across the hub to the other spokes on the other side. And in fact, if you've actually got some of the designs like the G3 or the, or the 21 spoke fulcrum design where they have some radial spokes and some cross spoking, then all of the force has to go through the hub to the other side to the cross spoked spokes to be able to transfer that braking force to the outside rim. So all these things need to be made a little bit more beefy. So you're really like trying to take the weight out of your frame. Now, if we've got a frame that's about two thirds the weight of what we normally get, I mean, I've got frames, I've had rod buys like Camago C60 and the Look 695, and they're not even renowned for lightweight frames. So, you know, they're well up, you know, you know one kilo. So to get that weight out, to get like three, 400 grams out of it, that's a significant amount of material. And what you've got to understand is, is with carbon, 
it's not like you just take sheets out because the sheets are like layered. They're like, you know, because you put your fibers this way and then you put another sheet this way because they only can take 10 tensile forces. So you need to put the mats in at different angles to be able to take the loading in different directions. And also, if you've watched Hambini or Rail or any of these guys from Leshia Technique, then you'll know that they do actually have flaws in these bikes. You know, they're never they're not made perfect, or the or the or the whole sample of what's coming out the factories are not made perfect. So you know you're compromising that as well. So if you've got any voids or there's not quite enough material around the bottom bracket, and when they do the heat processing, they could have uneven shrinking. So your bottom bracket's not in line, and you're going to be losing watts there. So you know where have they compromised on this frame? You know, the it, it could actually make the bike you know be feel, feel either like soft when you're riding it, or as as some other people call it, noodly, or it could actually just be you know, not very thin and not be able to take, you know, much loading. Or you could even have problems with misalignment of the bottom brackets if there's not enough material to control the shrinkage when they do the heating process. Well, it's very impressive what Specialized have done here. Okay, they've got a, a disc brake bike that's, that's really in the realms of a rim brake bike. But really, you know, is this anything really special? Because, I mean... You know, they're talking about these lightweight wheels. Now, these wheels that were on this bike claim to be about 12, 1300 grams. I mean, really, that's not that, that's not that light in the old school world. I mean, I've got these Bora 2 Ultras on here, and, uh, you know, they're, they're a, a 50 mil rim. And, you know, they're, <laughs> they're like 1200, you know, 1300. They're not even claimed lightweight wheel. And even my Reynolds that, uh, that I had on this bike when I first built it, the 66 mil, they're about 13 or 1400 grams. And I've got a set of Reynolds lightweights out the back there, and you know, they're, they're a thousand, they're a thousand grams. So, you know, in the old school world, that it's not that light. So I can see where they're coming from. They go, oh yeah, but it's just brake bike, you know? But, you know, it's not, it's not light. As far as bike goes, it's not really that light. And, and my local bike shop, I mean, he, you know, the owner there has told me they've built five kilo bikes, you know, in the old rim brake design. So you can get you can get quite a lot of weight out of these bikes if you really want to. And and at 17,000 Aussie, I mean, geez, you can get a custom built bike. You, you could go to, you know, Sato Bikes and get a bike built for that much. I mean, their frames are, I actually priced one. And for here in Australia, it was between six and 7,000 for a frame. And the Bastion frames, I think, are around about eight grand, which is exactly the same price that Specialized are charging for this frame that's coming out of China. And those ones, those Bastion frames, are really, really nice, and they're custom made. You can have your name, and you can have it built to any dimensions of any bike you want. So you have all that flexibility for the same money. So, bottom line for me is, is it's not that ultra light. That's the first thing. It's light, but it's not ultra light. And two, for that sort of money, man you can get yourself a custom built bike that fits you exactly. Not like something that there's only five sizes or six sizes to choose from. And then you, and if you're an in-between person or you've got a bit longer legs or a bit longer torso, you know, you've got to try and fit yourself into an in-between size. So, you know, why do that when you're spending 17,000 Aussie and you can build yourself a custom bike from a custom frame builder and have it fit you exactly? So... You know, really for me, at this sort of money for a production bike, even though they're claiming it's that light, um, it's really actually not. So that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. And, you know, leave your comments down below. Do you really think that uh, this new Specialized EFOS is worth worth the money they're asking? 17 pounds from a very traditional style frame. Okay, it's it's lightish. I will say it's lightish, but it's not super light. And, you know, it's in the price where it's comparing with custom builds. Do you really think that uh, it's value for money? Leave your comments down below. And remember, if you like this vid, to subscribe and ring that bell so you see all of my cycling content. Cheers, guys.